And so synergist, going back to that, mm -hmm. that's really just going to be muscles that contribute to the action. Mm -hmm. So they contribute to the action, but um, actually, no, they don't. Oh, I think it's something different, aren't I? Nope, because that's more of a neutralizer. They have that common action. Uh, a synergist is a partial antagonist. Who partially inhibits the action? Mm-hmm. Because remember, when it comes to muscles, when they contract, they want to perform all the actions they possibly can. So this is going to help neutralize, even though it's not a neutralizer. Mm -hmm. So the difference between a synergist and a neutralizer is that this one only has the antagonistic action. This one has a common action. So if you say it has the antagonist action, that means it does all the other actions the synergist does? Neutralizer just want does one? Or am I thinking too hard about that? Say that one more time. So it's different between synergist and neutralizer. Neutralizer just does one. Synergist does all of them. Um, or not really? Not quite. So an antagonist opposes all of the motions. Like tries to break it, advises to break it. Yep. So those would be complete opposites to each other. Because one does um, flexion, the other one does extension, and things like that. So those are perfect um, opposites in mm -hmm. all their actions, okay? A neutralizer has that common action, but as well as opposing action. So that would be like your deltoids. So if you have your anterior versus posterior deltoid, one, your anterior deltoid does internal rotation. Mm -hmm. Does the other one, I'm guessing, do external rotation? Mm hmm. And then both probably share, um, oh heck, this does it right here. Mm -hmm. That's going to do elbow extension. It doesn't work on the elbow, right? Oh, oh I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, where's it inserted into? So it inserts on your, uh, that tuberosity, your deltoid tuberosity. Just so it's really small. Mm -hmm. So it connects here and then it connects to Depending on which ones it connects to your clavicle, it can connect to your scapula, but it's all a matter of connecting right here. So you more shoulder movement. Touch. It does, yep. It, since it crosses the shoulder, because a muscle will act upon any joint it crosses, mm -hmm. right? So since it's, it'll cross the shoulder joint, and that's the only joint it crosses, so that's what it acts upon. I'm going to guess shoulder... Shoulder doesn't do external rotation, that's the scapula. It's going to be shoulder, maybe abduction. So, ABD? Mm -hmm. Yep. So it does do abduction. However, the movement that you were showing me once again was not the shoulder. That was more scapular abduction. But shoulder abduction is this. Okay. Right? Because mm -hmm. it's a matter of going away from the midline. Because we're looking at the shoulder joint, not the shoulder girdle. Because shoulder girdle is a matter of your scapula coming out. That would be abduction, whereas shoulder abduction is here. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, good. So that's a common action. They also have another opposing action, I think. So it's actually scapular abduction, not shoulder abduction for deltoids. Uh, this is all shoulder. Okay. No scapula. Okay. So once again, um, that's what I was talking about when it comes to differentiating between the shoulder and the shoulder girdle muscles. And they have those separated um, in your book. So something else that I want to... Mm -hmm. um, so this is what a neutralizer is. Okay. Okay, so it's a matter of having a common action as well as opposing actions. And so when these muscles, when they perform abduction, muscles always want to perform all the actions they can. So your abductors, these two are also going to, this one's going to externally rotate, this one's going to internally rotate, and because they're both acting at the same time, they're going to cancel each other out. That they're going to neutralize each other. It's like a tug of war, equal force opposite direction, nobody moves. Yep, exactly. So that's going to be the opposing action. Okay. Okay. Now when it comes to a synergist, a synergist does not have a common action. It only has a partial antagonistic action. So, 
For example, when it comes to elbow flexion, what is your main elbow flexor? Oh, sorry. Okay. You're good. You're good. Sorry. I didn't realize you were writing. So with your elbow flexor, what is your main elbow flexor? Main elbow flexor is going to be biceps break, yeah. Good. Okay. So you have your bicep. Okay. What actions does this muscle perform? Can you think of them? Um, Spray cat does, of course, elbow flexion. Um. Okay. There are two main ones that I'm looking for. So first off, how many joints does it, this muscle cross? I think just one. One. Okay, so it definitely does your elbow. Does it cross your shoulder? So your biceps, the origin is up here, the insertion is down here. Oh, just the main muscle mass so, right there. Yep, the main muscle mass is here, but where they insert, so insertions and origins are important generally. So you don't have to know specifically where they are, but you want to know generally that it's either on your clavicle or your um, scapula, which in this case your biceps originates on your scapula and inserts down past your elbow. Internal rotation? Um, not quite. It wouldn't do. I don't think so. Okay. But um, that also depends on the angle. But when it comes to the shoulder, it's gonna also do shoulder flexion, right? Because if it attaches up here, because with how your arm is oriented, it's going to attach here and then up here. So in that plane of motion, that's going. If that contracts, that's gonna pull your arm into shoulder flexion. So it does elbow flexion as well as shoulder flexion. Because it passes over the joint up here as well. Yep. So it pulls over, it pulls over, and eventually it pulls up on there too, I guess. Yep. And so a synergist is going to partially um, oppose. So antagonistic is opposing. So it's going to partially oppose one of those motions. So the motion that you're wanting to perform is elbow flexion because you're doing a dumbbell curl. Okay. Right. However, when a muscle contracts, it's going to want to perform all the actions it possibly can. Therefore, it's going to want to do elbow flexion as well as shoulder flexion. Oh, okay. Okay. If it performs shoulder flexion, then that's going to be really awkward because you're going to go up and over, <laughs> right? Okay, so um, your body needs a synergist or a partial antagonist, a muscle that partially opposes the motions, yes, the motions that you don't want, the undesired motions.